This project is part of a project to complete a project to complete a project to complete a project series. Hey, we've all been there. So that I can get a VFD mounted on my lathe. I needed to be able to mount milling tools in my lathe for the next project. And to do that, you need to use a drawbar. And I don't have one of those. So the lathe that I use has an MT4 taper and it has about an inch and an eighth spindle bore, uh, which is one of the things I really like about the lathe. It has a large spindle bore for its size. The problem with MT4 taper is that collets are rarer than hen's teeth. Now I know that this old Tony has hen teeth in his shop and probably has a full set of metric hexagon MT4 collets as well. But here in this shop, those unicorns just don't exist. Due to the size, you can't really adapt MT4 to R8 or 5C. Uh, this is primarily due to geometry constraints. There's just not enough meat in there to make that work. Of course, R8 and 5C collets are plentiful and basically everywhere. But hey, I guess I don't get to use them. Uh, the X2 mini mill that I have uses an MT3 taper. Naturally, then it makes sense to set up the lathe to use MT3. That way I can use all the MT3 tooling that I have already and I can put it in the lathe when I need it. I designed up a basic drawbar in Fusion and made up the drawing. It consists of three parts. There's the rod, which is essentially the drawbar. There's a bushing that goes in the end of the spindle. And then there's the nut to tighten the thing up. Pretty basic. You know, some people just go out and use some shredded rod and a few large diameter washers, and there's nothing wrong with that, eh? It gets the job done. But I just wanted a proper rod and bushing. It helps make sure that it's pulling parallel to the spindle. Plus, what fun is just cutting off some threaded rod. The rod was turned from some mystery metal, and it was super tough. And it was Friday evening, and I didn't want to wait till Monday to get some proper materials, so I decided to go ahead with the project. The surface on that material was crazy hard. Now, it wasn't like I couldn't machine it with high-speed steel and had to go to carbide, but it still was was very difficult to machine. I think it was due to in the drawing process. It was had a very tough, hard layer, so it took some work to get under it. I still have the burns all on my arms. The chips were coming off blue. Okay, so now I get completely why the Brits put the carriage wheel on the right side of the lathe. I turned the rod between centers after setting the tailstock up on the last project just to see how accurate it was because this part's quite a bit longer. And I got it to within one thou over the, the length, which I was pretty happy with. So this end here was about five tenths larger than this end. And then there's a there's a bow in the center and that's because I don't have a traveling steady. This is jobs like in traveling steady territory where, you know, it's getting long and it's quite slender. So, you know, as the tool comes across, it's gonna push the, the tool away or push the part away from the tool and you'll get a bow in the center. But I was quite happy with the results. And there's lots of people say that you can't do precision work on an import machine. And by import, we mean from China or Taiwan, entry level type machine. And I disagree. The other part of the project was I had to make an MT4 to MT3 adapter. And that's this piece right here. Um, most of the ones that I saw that are available here have the tang on the end of it designed for a drill press. Apparently ones exist that kind of look like this already, but the only ones I could find were in the UK. Um, I will tell you, as most of us know, that very little can stand up to a zip disc and an angle grinder, and this piece was no exception. I also wanted to let everybody know I made a few changes on the back end to make the videos come out looking a little bit more polished and hopefully less amateurish and we'll see how that goes. Uh, for those of you waiting for the titanium pencil build, it's coming. Uh, we're, I'm working on it. So now let's uh, take a look and see how I made this.
I started the project by modifying an MT4 to MT sleeve that is traditionally used in a drill press. The tang on one end of the sleeve used to remove the adapter in a drill press needed to be removed because it obviously gets in the way of the drawbar. Apparently they make these adapters for drawbars, but for the price that I paid for one with the tang, I figured it was worth risking modifying one. Since these adapters are hardened and this one was no exception, I removed the tang using a zip disc. I tried to do all my abrasive cutting outside if the weather is decent, and when I did this it was. I kept it cool with some dihydrogen monoxide. Since close enough only counts in horseshoes, hand grenades, and cleaning up sawn edges, I set the table at an angle of 1.5 degrees, and I set the guide at 1.5 degrees as well. These belt sanders are great additions to the shop. The ones that use smaller belts are probably a little more useful, but this one gets used a lot. I particularly like the large table. At this point I should mention what many of you already know, but some may not. Whenever you do a milling in a lathe or in a mill, the tool you are using must be held in with a drawbar. Generally no drawbar, no milling. Some people try milling in drill presses and other tools without a drawbar and often find their end mills walk out of the machine. Milling puts large side loads on the cutter versus drilling and boring which is an axial load. Thus drill presses don't have drawbars. As I've said, the rod portion was made from mystery steel I had in the shop. It was pretty hard to machine the first few cuts off it. I had to take a large enough depth of cut to get under the surface of the material. I center drilled and threaded each end. I have a die holder for the lathe on, on the project list. Holding dies the way I've been doing is not the best setup. I do like using dies over single point threading because it's a lot quicker. If I have a die, I use it. I single point threads when dies are exceptionally expensive or absolute precision is required.
After roughing out the rod, I chucked up my scrap center, turned to fresh center, and placed the rod between centers to take a finished pass. I measured the results and I was very pleasantly surprised, with less than one thou taper over 10 inches. This was after setting up the tailstock in the last job. Although it was good to see moving the tailstock further out did not significantly affect the alignment. On to the bushing. Pushing was an easy part to make. I did bore the center using a carbide insert tool, something I'll explain in the next project. No, I'm not a high speed steel trader. One thing that I would like to mention is how the concrete bench I've built for this lathe has drastically improved the cutting performance. Now, I know in this case I'm not parting off the center, but parting off this part is easy and no fuss. The bench has a lot to do with that. The nut was another easy part, the problem is I just can't catch. I don't intend to do heavy milling with this setup in the lathe, more like occasional light work. I also do have an ER20 MT4 collet chuck that I'll press into service for heavier milling instead of using this setup. Stay tuned for the next boring episode. Thanks for watching. See you next time.